We're trying to understand the baby's nonverbal language. And it has many components. Emotion, which could either be facial expression, facial emotion, or vocal motion. We also study orientation. Perhaps the most central one is attention, and certainly is where you start when you're looking and playing with a baby, is the baby attending. The root of all of our relationships is right here in the mother-baby communication. And it sets a trajectory. The, the infant mother, infant father communication sets a trajectory in development, which doesn't mean you can't change it and doesn't mean other things don't change it. It's not a linear trajectory, but it's, it's a very powerful, formative trajectory in development. I think that's one of the reasons why it's so fascinating to everybody. Human communication is so fast. We know something happened. We kind of know what it is. We know we were affected by it. But it's so fast and a lot of it's out of awareness. That you couldn't go back and really unpack it without the advantage of the film. Microanalysis for me, started as a way of analyzing communication. And it was a way of timing the onset and the offset of every single little behavior of each person with the ultimate goal to see how does one person's stream of behaviors affect the other ones and vice versa. Beatrice's research makes explicit something that's really intuitive to all of us. It's something we know anyway, I think, actually, that people react to each other, and it shows, <laughs> and it's important. And I, I think that that's something we probably all feel is, is true in any, in any relationship. But to make it explicit in the way that she has in the most kind of micro way, right? Very micro, but at the same time, so subtle, so nuanced. I think can help us all pay attention to how we impact each other. That's kind of a very simple idea. It's a very simple idea, but you can feel how important that is for, for parents having children, for analysts treating patients, and for people treating each other. The quintessential thing that defines her work is this four month face-to-face -face videotape interaction where she then can use um, microanalysis to look at second by second or frame by frame analysis of the mother and the infant and their own behavior or how they affect each other's behavior. And a really brilliant methodology for understanding these subtle, undetectable, outside of conscious awareness kinds of behaviors that are occurring between two individuals. Facial mirroring, for example, as each person's face 
goes in the same affective direction, making increments more and more open, more and more smiling, more and more head up into the most beautiful, glorious, open mouth smiles, which we call gape smiles. If you put that into a frame-by-frame -frame analysis, all of a sudden you understand something about the power uh, and the gloriousness of a mother and the baby who are just incredibly in love. <laughs> what is microanalysis? It starts out as a method of identifying movement, coding it, that is, what degree of mouth open is it? One, two, three, four, right? What degree of smile is it? One, two, three, you know, what degree of head orientation away is it? Here, 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 here. So what's the type of movement and the timing of the movement? You're looking for change, and you're stopping, and you're saying, what's the time? Change, change, change. Now, how detailed do you want the change, right? If you think of 30 frames a second, which is a lot of digital video has 30 frames a second, and other has 60 frames a second. Oh. The face could change many, many, many times in the course of a second. These things can happen really so rapidly that it's hard to imagine. You can start playing him just if you want to. You're going to play for 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. So, what's the setup in the lab? There are two cameras on the wall. One's going to be on the mother's face, one can, one's going to be on the baby's face. It's going to generate a split screen view. You're going to see the mother and the baby side by side, but you have to remember they're really face to face. We study two and a half minutes of uninterrupted face-to-face -face play. And the mother's instructions are, play with your baby as you would at home. Except, please, no toys. We all have different reactions when our partner looks away. It's more um, fun for the mother if the baby's looking and responding and playing. So when the baby looks away, what's it like for the mother? And it really depends on her own history and her own security and her own parenting. And all of this will be out of awareness. If she feels pretty secure in her own history, she will feel pretty secure when her baby looks away, and it won't be that big a deal. And she'll know her baby will come back. So the idea here is um, first to look at you and the baby, and for you to tell me what you think you feel and what you think the baby feels. How's the baby affecting you, and how are you affecting the baby? Then we'll look at me and the baby, and I'll tell you what I think I feel, what I think the baby feels, mm -hmm. how I'm affecting the baby. What we know from Beatrice's work is that the four-month data um, predicts one-year attachment. And the four-month data, when, when she analyzes it across all modalities, facial affect, vocal affect, head orientation, gaze, self-touch, maternal touch, um, across all of these modalities in which she can code the two and a half minutes at four months, this will predict attachment at one year. Most mothers, in most research, mothers look 85 to 95 or 97 percent of the time. So the mother is kind of the constantly looking partner. And the baby is the one that makes and breaks the contact. The baby's looking away is a very important method of the baby's arousal regulation. Gaze is very arousing. Just before the baby looks away, his heart rate has gone up. 
And as soon as he looks away, his heart rate comes right back down to baseline. So looking away is something that the baby needs to do and has an important utility in the baby's own ability to function socially. Are my hands gone? Oh. <laughs> the fact that two and a half minutes of face-to-face -face videotape at four months predicts one-year attachment it speaks to how incredibly powerful the method is and also how important it is to study, right? Because even from four months, if mothers can have an intervention and learn, oh, your baby is supposed to look away, you don't have to be upset when your baby looks away, that that can be a really powerful piece of information for a mother to have. What's he feeling? Um, he's unsure. Yeah. Yeah, tentative and, t and turns away. He's unsure. Yeah. And what's he, he doing there? Wants out. Yeah, the arch. He wants out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> ASAP. Yeah. And the hands go up for him. Mm-hmm. So if the mother is less secure and experiences the baby's looking away, even as a sort of micro-abandonment or micro-moment of the baby not wanting her or liking her, she might pursue the baby. So she might call the baby, she might pull the baby's hand, she might chase the baby. Chase, in, in our vernacular, is as the baby moves his head away, okay, I'll be the baby, right? So as the baby moves the head away, the mother's uh, head and body move in the direction that the baby just moves. It's sort of quasi-synchronous. It's not exactly synchronous. As the baby moves away, the mother sort of chases further and further. And then, then you get these times where the baby will just sort of go down over here, won't look at her, come back over here, and she'll chase again on the other side and push the baby away. So the problem with chasing is it does push the baby away. And it interferes with the baby's arousal regulation. So the more the mother calls, pulls, chases, sometimes they actually try to force the baby's head back to look at them, because they're really um, feeling maybe desperate, really, to get the baby back. And they feel like maybe the baby's not coming back unless they get the baby back. Um, then the more, the more the mother chases, the more aroused the baby is, the longer it will take the baby to regulate his arousal down, and the longer it will be before the baby can come back. So it's really a really counterproductive cycle, and what the mother needs to do at that moment is very counterintuitive, but she needs to sit back and wait. If she could just wait and relax and breathe and trust that her baby will come back, then her baby will come back. There you are. Yes. There you are. Hi. I know you really want to sit up. You really want to do it. You really want to do it. You really want to do it. And you're going to do it. I know. Hooray for Noah. Hooray for Noah. I want to show what looking and looking away looks like in a pair that end up secure at a year. This is one really just fantastic moment, ebullient moment. And here's another moment where you can just see how lovely they are, how connected, how well connected they are. But now I'm going to show you a section where they have, um, they struggle a little. And um, what you're going to see is moments of the mother looming into the baby's face. Now, what's a loom? A loom is a word that we use to describe when a mother moves from upright to forward to loom right into the baby's face. 
you're going to see from this frame to the next, the mother looms in from here to here. And watch the baby's feet splay out as she moves in from her frame. If you watch the baby's frame, you see the baby's hands go out. His head goes up, his feet go out, and his mouth tightens just a little. So you sense a little stress in the baby. Then here, the mother gives the baby a beautiful smile with her eyebrows up. And you can, again, you can see the baby react. He's still looking at her. He has a very nice interest face, but it looks like he's about to fall out of his chair. He's like sort of maybe over aroused. Everything is he's sort of a little bit destabilized like that. And then he looks away. He closes his eyes. He moves his head back to the vis-a-vis, -vis, but he closes his eyes, see that? He puts his hands up, sort of like a um, protective gesture. And the mom at that moment just closes her mouth, maybe just sort of sensing the baby's need to regulate down. And then the baby really regulates down, puts his head down, puts that gesture up, and is really sort of cuts off, which is like a real, let me calm down. She's gradually, at each, each little moment that the baby down regulates, she's coming down a little bit off her big smile. Then the baby picks up his head a little. He hasn't looked yet. And notice how the mom is moving back a little. She's sort of intuitively sensing maybe she should move back a little. And her smile also, if you notice, came down a little. Here the baby moves his head whole body back, and the mom sobers. And then he looks at her right here. Puts his hands down a little, and he looks. And he's back right here. He's back. He's reconnected visually. And the mom actually waits. This is a very interesting moment here. Do you see how she, she doesn't move at all? That's, that's quite wonderful, really, because she just... She's waiting to see what happens, and she just gives the baby a little space right there. Then they both smile together. And I, I love this moment because they both sort of light up exactly the same moment. She, Mom has a big smile again with her eyebrows up. The baby has an open mouth and a smile. Then she flirts. Look at that lovely kind of flirty gesture. And his head goes exactly with hers, exactly with hers. So it's almost like they're both flirting. So really, this is an adorable moment. Then she looms in again. The baby tolerates it this time. The baby doesn't move away from it, and he maintains the eye contact. He can really, he's, he's handling it. And then they put their hands, heads go back together. They smile together, and they're back. And that's the repair. What's, what's really very special here is how she flirts with him. And he sort of flirts back, and that begins the repair. So they have this flirty moment where she's like this, and he's turning just, just sort of to match her. And then he gradually comes back and regains his animation and then goes up into this really beautiful smile, they, the, which they get together, and they do it exactly at the same moment. So um, it's, a, it's a really nice example of um, a kind of a little bit of a mismatched moment that, that, the, that the two of them together repair, right? Because it's not, it's not just the mother who makes the repair. The baby had to sort of receive the flirting moment and then gradually come back up to her, which he did. So now we're back um, with the same mother and baby. It's again the same story of disruption and repair, a loom and how to repair it. But this one, the reason why I like this one also is because the repair is fuller this time. 
where we start here is the mother's already loomed in and the baby's already got his hands sort of a little bit up. And the next frame shows you from here to here, from here to here. It just shows you as she's loomed in already, she gets more positive, so she's increasing the stimulation. And the baby defends a little more, pulls the hands from here to here. He's sort of saying, mm, no, this isn't, this isn't working. Then he actually turns away and puts his hands further up. So he's doing this, you know, which is really very strong. This generally, I interpret this as don't touch me, kind of a, that feeling. Um, and like this, it's like a real sort of um, fending her off. And how does she respond at that moment? She moves back. She senses something. She moves back. And she goes from the really big, full eyebrows up, smile. You watch her eyebrows come down. Then he peeks out. <laughs> He's, he's over here, and he goes, doop, like that, peeks out. And meanwhile, she's moving back. And again, the eyebrows are coming down a little. So through those little movements, the baby senses that she senses his state. That's how he gets it. He, he senses her adjusting down, even though the, the adjustments are tiny. He senses that. He peeks out more raises his arms to look more, and she's still moving back. She's moving back even more, and her face is fading down more toward, a, um, toward interest from the high positive, which is more stimulating. So she's, her own arousal in her face is coming down, dampening down. Now he orients back to her, but he's still defending, still got those arms up there like, mm, I'm not so sure. And you, there you really see the full tension in the mouth that the, the baby's not happy yet. And if you watch the mom's adjustment there, she's moving back still, and she's sobering a little. So she continues gradually to adjust to his having trouble. And then he puts his arms down, but he looks to the side. He's not actually looking at her. And she's still moving back. She's still intuiting that the baby needs more space. Then the baby looks. <laughs> See the, how he shifts his gaze there? See them? It's subtle. He really is he's really shifting his gaze from here to here. You have to watch the eyes. She comes in. As he looks back at her, she comes in. It's like she, she uses that as the permission, the cue to say, oh, we're, we're back, we're back, we're, we're, we're coming back. And then he shows her that he's happy, but it's interesting. He has a nice smile and he's excited, but he's still got this thing out here, which is kind of a mixed message, right? I'm really happy, but I've still got this thing. And so she, you see, she also senses something, because she doesn't give the big smile. She gives just a, like a, ooh. So she also sees it is not the full repair, not the full smile. He's not fully back. So going from this frame to the next, it's kind of interesting because the baby down regulates. He looks down, actually. He moves his arms down, but he looks down. The mom smiles. I don't know if she was ready for this. So she's a little bit of a down regulation. And then he looks back at her, and he's, he's, he doesn't have a full smile. He has a hint of a smile, but you can see from his arms and his legs, he's excited. So there's a real sort of excitement moment. And she lights up. Then... <laughs> This part is really fun because they sort of match each, they play expressions and they sort of match each other's expressions. How do they do that, right? So they both open their mouths together. See that? Both open their mouths together. Then they both close their mouths together. 
they're really matching expressions. They're sort of playing with their faces. And then um, they both have a, have a moderate smile. So again, they're in that a very similar state with each other. And the baby's arm's coming up, so you feel like he's getting, he's getting better. He's feeling better. He's coming back. And then, then he's more smiley, right? More smiley with the hands and the feet and so on. And she's also more smiley. So she senses that. She's not moving in or out, but her smile really senses that he's coming back. And it's a really cute smile on the baby. And then the baby puts his head up and his mouth open, which is an excitement. It's not, it's not a smile, but it's a different kind of excitement. And she loves it. She smiles. And then he tilts his head. And she smiles a little too. And then he re-regulates down. Again, you wouldn't necessarily expect it, but on the other hand, since he's been struggling for a while, you understand it. He regulates down. He comes down a little. And she senses that. She, she, she notices it by, by the fact that she changes her expression. She moves in just a little as he, he regulates down. And then he says, woo, right? He goes, woo. He throws his arms out, throws his legs out, and says, you know, this is great. And then comes back a little from that. He, his arousal comes down a little. He pulls his arms and his legs back in. His mouth closes a little. And the mom has a little bit of surprise on her face, but she's still, she's playing. She loves it. So he's down regulates. And then he says, wow, wow, I love it. This is great. And that's the, that's the final repair moment. Everyone um, sometimes is a little bit over or a little bit under what might be optimal. And really what counts is the capacity of the pair to repair. Did we have any little feedback session? We did a little bit. We had, a, we had one. Do you remember what that was? Yeah, and I think that what you told me then was um, that I followed his vocal rhythms. You said that. Mm -hmm. um, I remember being there. I remember being a new mom. I remember being so in love with my little baby. I really saw it as an opportunity to get information about how I could be better, um, hear what I'm doing well, hear what I'm not doing well, and um, just be the best mom I could be. It's something that we don't get training in. You just get this little baby and are expected to be the mother. I came in to see Beatrice with Noah when he was four months and then came back at 12 months. And then after I had Andrew, I came back at um, when he was four months and then again when he was 12 months. So I came four times to her lab. As a parent, that a child can regulate himself is probably the most important life skill in that I could imagine. And your rhythm is so well fit to him because you can sense he's on the edge of being not happy, right? Because there's these little grimaces every once in a while. Yeah. In those moments where they look away or they look down, you it's like, what can I do to fix this? You just want to fix it. Now, let's go back. I think it's just having confidence that, like, of course he's going to come back. He needs me. <laughs> I'm, I'm like all he has <laughs> right now. He's going to come back to me. Again, you see, I think one of the beautiful things that you did in this film is that you made sure you didn't overstimulate him during this initial portion when he was sort of on the edge. Uh -huh. And gradually when he got calmer, he was able to come up more and be more sociable. Yeah. But you were very careful not to overstimulate him during this period. Mm -hmm. Ma. 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 I feel like with me, Beatrice gave me permission to 
allow my son to show an emotion other than happiness. If he has a moment where he's sad, that's normal. Aren't you sad sometimes? Is it normal for him to be happy all the time? It's not your job to entertain him. It's your job to hear him so that he knows there's someone who's listening. So this is your second visit with your second child. Right. Andrew. Right. And he's 16 months. Yeah. Yeah. And it's been almost four years since I came with Noah. Wow. Yeah. Four years. I hear Beatrice in my mind saying, it's okay. Be there with him. Join him where he is and give him permission to be sad and let him know you understand that he's sad and that his feelings are real and that it's okay. It's okay when your baby looks away. And they do it because they physiologically need to look away and regulate their heartbeat. It doesn't mean they don't like you. You know, for many of us, we take that in stride. You have a baby, the baby looks away, it doesn't upset us. But for many mothers, it's disturbing. And until someone can teach them, show them, look, your baby looked away and look what happened on your face. How do you think you felt? And that's what Beatrice can help these mothers to see. Then we can make effective intervention that might really have very long lasting effects from what we know from her research. The wonderful thing is that things go wrong and things get better, <laughs> right? So I think that might take the sting out of the, the, the mom who feels blamed or scrutinized. It's reassuring, you know, to know that a mother can have all kinds of feelings, including irritation, right? And that's healthy and necessary. I think Beatrice has a unique ability just to give people confidence. And she kind of has a way of slowing things down in a world that's moving really quickly. The thing that microanalysis is the best at is capturing the moments. And I, I think why people are very attracted to microanalysis is that it helps us unpack experiences, interactions that we intuitively appreciate. It gives us this way of standing back from them and being able to think about them. It brings it alive, it makes it human, and it brings it to the moment. <laughs>